some other source of heat. The compression system activated by a compressor will be described first. It is divided into the high and low pressure sides. The high pressure side is that portion of the system through which the refrigerant travels under high pressure. This side starts at the discharge valve of the compressor and includes a condenser, the receiver or storage tank, and the liquid line. The low pressure side is that part of the system through which the refrigerant moves under low pressure. This side starts at the expansion valve, which divides the high and low pressure sides and includes the cooling unit or evaporator, the suction line, and the suction valve of the compressor. The compressor is essentially a cylinder in which a piston works. This is the course of a refrigerant through a typical compression cycle. The refrigerant, in the form of a gas under low pressure, is drawn from the suction line into the compressor. The gas enters the cylinder through the suction valve as the piston moves on its downward stroke. When the piston moves upward, the pressure and temperature of the gas rise. The gas is compressed and is finally pushed through the discharge valve into the condenser. The refrigerant enters the condenser as a high pressure gas and its temperature is higher than that of the air or water cooling the condenser. As heat flows from the gas to the cooling agent, the gas condenses, changes to a high pressure liquid, and passes into the liquid receiver or storage tank. From the receiver, the high pressure liquid refrigerant passes through the liquid line on its way to the cooling unit. The high pressure refrigerant must now be reduced to a low pressure liquid so that it can evaporate at a low temperature. The refrigerant passes through an expansion valve which divides the high and low pressure sides and controls the flow of refrigerant into the cooling unit. The refrigerant enters the cooling unit under a reduced pressure caused by the suction stroke of the compressor. It evaporates, absorbing heat from food in the refrigerator and providing what we know as refrigeration. The refrigerant, now a low pressure gas, is drawn through the suction line back to the compressor, completing the cycle. This then is the cycle of changes of the refrigerant as it moves continuously through the compression system. The absorption system is based on principles developed in a famous experiment conducted by Michael Faraday. He sealed in a vent test tube a compound of silver chloride, a white powder, and dry ammonia gas which had been absorbed by the powder. He heated the end of the tube containing the powder and at the same time cooled the opposite end of the tube with water. Ammonia vapor was released during application of heat and was condensed in the cool end of the tube. When the flame under the powder was extinguished, vapor that had not been liquefied was reabsorbed by the powder, reducing the pressure on the liquid ammonia. The liquid ammonia began to boil, changed back to a vapor, and was reabsorbed by the powder. The end of the tube containing the boiling liquid was intensely cold the evaporating ammonia having drawn heat from the nearest substance, the test tube itself. The driving force in the absorption system is heat, and a heater and generator take the place of the compressor. The generator contains an absorbent, 
a liquid or solid which has absorbed the refrigerant. Water passes through a coil to cool the absorbent and permit it to reabsorb the refrigerant at the proper stage of the cycle. A simplified diagram of the system is filled out by a condenser and a tank which serves as liquid receiver and cooling unit. Check valves guarantee the movement of the refrigerant in only one direction. The cycle begins when heat is applied to the generator, releasing the refrigerant as a gas from the absorbent. The gaseous refrigerant travels upward to the condenser, which is cooled by air or water. Here it is liquefied. Its heat is dispelled, and it flows by gravity to the cooling unit. As the liquid refrigerant accumulates, the float rises until it reaches an electrical contact point, setting off a device which automatically turns off the flame of the burner. The same device also sends a stream of water through the coil and the generator. The absorbent which surrounds the coil is thus cooled. Two processes now cause the refrigerant to evaporate. One is the transfer of heat to the refrigerant from the food near the cooling unit. The other is the power of the absorbent, when cool, to reabsorb the refrigerant. When the liquid level drops sufficiently for the float to reach the lower electrical contact point, the burner is automatically lit, heat is once more applied to the absorbent, and the cycle is renewed. In this way, an intermittent absorption cycle is produced through the alternating application and withdrawal of a flame. The principles of refrigeration are physical principles applied as follows for the purpose of removing heat and reducing temperature. First, mechanical refrigeration rests on the ability of a refrigerant to absorb heat while changing from a liquid to a gas and to release that heat while returning to the liquid state. Second, when the pressure on a liquid refrigerant is reduced, the liquid boils at a lower temperature. Third, the transfer of heat from food items or other warm surroundings to a liquid refrigerant involves three processes. Radiation, convection, and conduction. With the introduction of a refrigerator box, insulated against outside heat, the elements of refrigeration are ready to be brought together in a refrigeration cycle. In the compression cycle, the compressor forces the refrigerant through the system. The liquid refrigerant in the cooling unit absorbs heat, thereby cooling its surroundings and changes to a gas. The gaseous refrigerant loses this heat in the condenser and changes back to a liquid. In the absorption system, heat energy provides the initial movement when the refrigerant is released as a gas from the absorbent. After losing its heat and liquefying in the condenser, it moves by gravity flow and collects in the cooling unit. The refrigerant then absorbs heat from its surroundings, changes to a gas, and is reabsorbed by the absorbent. These are the principles of refrigeration. Understanding them is basic to good refrigeration practice. <laughs>